Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is the show where I review all the comics I read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the week and everything in between, and at the end of the episode, we talk about the viewer's pick of the week. So in the comments below, let me know your pick of the week for a chance to be featured on the episode. Now let's jump into this. We actually have a, a very small haul for this week. Uh, there's only seven books, but next week I have a much heavier haul, so the balancing act of the comic book haul for this past month has been kind of weird uh, because, uh, you know, two weeks ago I had almost 20 books. Yeah, uh, Last week I had like eight and this week I have seven and then I think I have like 15 or 20 books next week. So uh, the printing shortage is definitely making it a weird haul. But let's jump into this. Number seven for me is Godzilla vs. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue one. I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. I don't know much about Godzilla. I don't even think I've seen a Godzilla movie. But I'm like, this is a really interesting team up. You have a kaiju character, uh, which obviously the Power Rangers are kind of used to fighting with their with their Megazords. And I'm like, okay, a very popular kaiju character, the most popular uh, kaiju character. Uh, so I just thought it was a really fun team up. And, you know, the art style looked really gritty and, and fun for the book. And I think it really was gritty and fun. But I felt like the dialogue was very dense for the type of book it was it just makes us throw into the story if you don't know anything about power rangers uh which i think a lot of people jumping into this might not know a lot, a lot about power rangers or vice versa they don't really explain anything in this now i love the power rangers so for me that was a detriment to the book but i i feel like you know comparing it to the tmnt uh crossover they did i felt like that was a, a better way to jump into both franchises if you didn't know either or you're a fan of both and this one just uh really throws you into the story and I, I feel like it it was so plot heavy that it was hard to even get into the plot so overall giving that two stars uh, I was a bit disappointed with that one all right so that is number seven moving on to number six which is the trials of the Amazons Wonder Girl issue one the only reason I got this issue is because I've been following Wonder Girl I like Wonder Girl I did not really like the first issue of the trial of the Amazons which is why I decided to skip it. I wasn't really reading any of the other Wonder Woman books. So this one, I was hoping it would connect a little bit more to the series, and it kind of does, but I actually feel like that's the fault of this issue, is that it, it kind of had one foot in this Trial of the Amazon story and another foot in, hey, we got canceled, I'd like to still tell Yara's story, and I feel like that didn't really mesh well here. And also because this is, uh, you know, something I expected with this book was that it's going to tackle all the Wonder Girls, we do get to definitely see a big part from Yara, and then... A big part from Cassie and continuing her story with Artemis, but then Donna Troy is kind of left out in this issue and, and only really shows up in the end. So I just thought it was not as well balanced as it could be. I probably enjoyed the Cassie moments the most because it felt a bit more tied into the Trial of the Amazons, uh, but I just kind of wish it was just better balanced because I, I enjoy Yara as a character. I want to see her more involved here too, uh, but just her her narrative didn't really fit as well. Uh, also, also the, the artwork is always strong, but I thought the coloring was very dark for this book so it, was, it wasn't as strong as the previous volumes for me so overall giving that uh two and a half stars and that is number six all right moving on to number five which is miss marvel beyond the limit issue four this is the penultimate issue of this series and uh you know the plot has not been my favorite for this but i like the characters and i enjoyed seeing the alternate reality version of miss marvel that was probably my my favorite part also the artwork is just so good and expressive and bright for this book uh but the plot is kind of limited uh it, it's interesting because the book is called beyond the limit and we get to see this character as a shapeshifter kind of misunderstands what's happening with miss marvel and becomes a villain because of it and we get a bit of a backstory of why she's doing what she's doing in very much in an expositionary way and then uh we really don't get to see a lot of miss marvel here i feel uh you know there it just kind of felt very surface level this issue uh, where i at least feel like the other previous issues did a better job at interacting with some of the supporting characters and giving kamala a bit more of a, a story so overall giving that three stars i don't think it was a bad issue i actually really enjoyed seeing the alternate reality of miss marvel but i just feel like the plot could be stronger for this mini series especially because we only have five issues left and or five issues of the whole series we only have one issue left and we don't really know what we're gonna get next from miss marvel so giving that three stars and that is number five moving on to number four 
which is Rogues, issue one. I do not like these magazine styles and never know what to do with them. Uh, but I was looking forward to this issue because, you know, DC Comics has been releasing a lot of Batman books. And I was like, okay, cool. Especially for the Black Label. And I was like, okay, cool. We're getting something Flash related. We're getting Joshua Williamson, who had a big Flash run uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, and and now we're, we're seeing him jump into that brand again, but from a different angle. And I thought this was very set up-y. There wasn't a lot that happened happen in this issue is very much like okay this is where the rogues are at and this is how they're going to become the rogues again and i don't think there was really a much of a hook there besides the art i really love the artwork here uh, I was, i'm a big fan of basketball heads i think it's a great book and that's the same artist i really really like this kind of um almost a Sean Phillips look of art style, especially when it comes to the coloring. So it kind of has a criminal, uh, 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 fatal look to the book. And I think that really worked for this. And I enjoyed uh, Captain Cole's relationship with his sister. I thought that was good. But everything just happened so slowly that I was like, okay, what's really convincing me to get this next issue besides that it's not a Batman book and, and, it was a, and not a Flash book. But uh, I wanted to like this more than I did, and I don't know if this first issue really hooked me, which was a bit disappointing. So overall, giving that three stars, and that is number four. Moving on to number three, which is Saga, issue 57. And... Uh, this is obviously a wonderful book. I'm very excited that it's back. And I thought the opener was very strong here. Because we end on a cliffhanger where we're like, okay, um, is our main character going to be uh, called out for, for being... Um, uh, another creature. I forget the what they call the species, but the winged creatures. And we actually get this really interesting scene where she actually gets surgery to take her wings off. And like the surgery is perfect. You, you don't even see any scars in the back. And, I, and that opening really sucked me in. Then the issue starts to slow down a bit as we, we get to see what was going on uh, with some of the other characters in the universe. And then we go back to, okay, our main character is uh, a leaving and, and leaving her kids. And, and we kind of get a setup up from that um i still think hazel has a wonderful narration here and i and i enjoyed that build up uh but i, I don't think it ever made it towards uh, how good that opener was um i, I really feel like it kind of went down from the opener but the opener was so good for this one and the artwork is really good for this as well so overall giving that three and a half stars that is my number three pick moving on to number two which is Robin issue 12. And this is, I, I guess, the uh, prelude to the, the Shadow War, which I'm very excited for. I want to see what that's going to be all about. And I really enjoyed this issue. I was a little worried with the beginning because it was, it was like... Uh, Definitely just explaining what was going on in the island. I'm like, oh no, is this going to be the whole issue of just like set up and, and kind of padding before our big event? But there is no padding here. There's actually some really good reveals, especially between Talia and Robin once, once he goes to the grave of Alfred and decides not to resurrect Alfred, which I thought was an interesting twist. And just learning more about the Al Ghul family and what they're planning and what's going to lead into Shadow War. Our work, as always, is really good. We also get a big cliffhanger of Flatline. Is Flatline deceiving Robin at all. Uh, so what is that relationship going to look like? The artwork is so strong, especially when it comes to the, the facial expressions here. So overall, I thought it was a very well-rounded issue uh, and a very good setup to this upcoming event that I am really excited for. So giving that four stars, and that is number two. Moving on to number one, a book I normally don't get, but because it was tying into Shadow War uh, and just because of the premise of it, I was like, let me go check it out. And that's Deathstroke Inc. issue seven. And I'm glad I picked this up because I've been loving Robin. It's one of my favorite books on stands. And uh, I've been wanting to know who Respawn is. And if you don't pick this up, you won't find out who Respawn is because, uh, yeah, we actually get the reveal in a book that's not Robin, which is a bit disappointing, but learning who that character is makes sense that it was in Deathstroke. And I guess gives a reason why these titles are crossing over. And I, I like a reason for events. So, and things affecting each other is nice. And... I enjoy the Deathstroke family. We get to see Rose and, and Slade kind of uh, butt heads here, but also Respawn team up with Slade, even though Rose is the one who helped him out. And we find out that he's kind of like this Connor Kent version of, of a clone where he's the clone of, I, I didn't catch if it was Ra's al Ghul or Talia, but either or and, and Slade. So Slade is kind of like the dad and with Slade losing his son, he's like, this is going to be my new son. And 
by Rose. Uh, and I thought it was a really solid issue. I, I thought the artwork was a lot stronger than it normally is. I'm not uh, a huge uh, fan of Howard Porter's art. It's just not my style. So to kind of see something a bit cleaner here was really nice. And yeah, I just thought it was a really solid issue. If you're a Deathstroke fan, especially a Deathstroke family fan, uh, this is a really important issue and a, a good lead up into Shadow War. So glad I enjoyed both Shadow War issues for this week. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite books were. And at the end of the episode, we talk about the viewer's pick of the week. So the viewer's pick of the week from last week was Red Wrath. And here are some comments about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Kamiguno, and I will see you guys in the next one.